The idea of the bridge came into play fairly early. Once we'd made a decision to create three separated pavilions, it was then a case of how do you traverse those pavilions. This particular building is one of a series of four townhouses. It was built in 1850 and it has a block of flats to one side. It was in incredibly kind of dark and long and narrow and, and so it was in need of redesign. Our clients' objectives were to bring light and air into the centre of the long thin site connect the buildings such that it doesn't compromise light into the courtyard spaces. They wanted to maximise the upper level footprint through reduction of stairs and provide a self-contained rear bedroom above a garage studio with separate rear access for multi-gen living. The concept was such that we thought about how do you approach composing new buildings around the existing building and in this case, as opposed to providing a, a contrasting addition kind of tacked onto the rear of the existing building, which is an often supported heritage approach, in this case it made sense to actually provide a series of kind of self-similar muse-like outbuildings. Because it was such a long site, we needed to provide textured layering of garden spaces between these buildings for the reason to get light and air into the buildings and so it seemed very sensible to compose three different pavilion buildings. The way that we approached those architecturally was rather than to provide a, a completely different architecture was actually to assimilate with the existing architecture. We like the fact that the new buildings which are actually recycled from the demolished building stock actually have that aged aesthetic to them and you might be confused, think as to which are old and which are new. When you view the building from the rear street, it does look like the building's all composed as one. The floor plan contains essentially living spaces at ground level, so you've got the sitting room, dining entertainment space and main stair for the house followed by a main courtyard which aligns with the neighbour's light court and then an open kitchen meals living and then a second small courtyard, kind of cafe breakfast area and a garage studio at the rear. Upstairs is effectively four bedrooms, adults sleeping at the front, kids in the middle and grandparents at the rear. And with only one stair internally it means that space could be maximised on the, the narrow site. The idea of the bridge came into play fairly early. Once we'd made a decision to create three separated pavilions, it was then a case of how do you traverse those pavilions. As the front door of the building was already set, being a heritage building and was on the north side, it meant that the circulation route through the building was going to be on the north side. You would normally align one movement space above the other, but the problem was if we put the upper level hallway on the north side, then it would completely overshadow the central courtyards. The design of the bridge went through many different iterations. In the end, the way it was designed was trying to keep it as, as tectonically pure as possible. We've got two opaque walls to avoid overlooking of neighbours, and then you've got a, a glass zone at the bottom which helps get some view down to the ground area, and obviously a glass floor which provides complete connection with the ground layer. Obviously the, the garden is quite something, so to actually view that garden as you're walking over it, and especially at night time, is quite incredible. The three buildings at the rear all look very similar when viewed from the public realm. We've retained the white paint finish because the white paint finish was depicted on the existing building. The bricks that are utilised have that luster and texture. You could be confused for thinking that the new buildings are actually original. Internally, materials are used and colours are used based on purpose. For example, within the existing building, we depicted the front room in a dark hue which plays homage to the Victorian rooms of yesteryear. 
And then as you walk through into the more open environs, the colours are lighter and it opens up to light and air and space. So quite contrasting actually to the existing room. Some of the colours we've used in the new building pay a nod to Victorian hues. We have muted hues such as a nude pastel colour and we have whites adorning different walls. So some walls are allocated to history and others are allocated to new walls. There's kind of a rhyme and reason behind selection of different colours and materials. We've used, for example, a, a Douglas fir board in the existing house, which is paying a nod to kind of the softwoods and Baltic pine. Whilst in the newer building, we've used Australian hardwoods such as black butt. And so the project is not only about exterior and, and landscape, but also about finishing the space off with real personality and, and softness and texture and warmth that's come through the, the selection of individual bespoke furniture items. Even though the design is a high density solution in a fairly built up area, We've incorporated lots of green throughout the building, so there's green roofs to the sides where there's setbacks to the rear building. There is a lovely courtyard garden that has been designed in collaboration with Robin Barlow. The idea here was that it seems like the edge of a cliff face almost. We've layered the basalt pavers in such a way that it, it seems very natural and organic. The integration of water within that design is inspired by the client's heritage, but also it's about that kind of calming effect that even though there's a tram bellowing outside and you know, lots of noises, it is quite a calming and sanctuary-like interior, even though it's in the middle of the city. I like the way that the old building can be used in a different way, so with that doorway to the laneway and just the way the building is situated in the laneway is paying a nod to those old laneway architecture of Fitzroy. It's about our bigger picture embracing of what the City of Melbourne will be in 30 years time and actually trying to reinvigorate laneways. I guess it's about the little things throughout the house, but it's also about bigger picture things that our practice is interested in. So what is the frozen grounds that he's, um, uh, what do you think he's like a property?